Today, I'm going to solve for you the problem of whether you have to open your hot tap and wait for ages for hot water to come out. How we're gonna get over that problem is by installing a secondary return pump on the hot water system. I've got this problem in my own home. It takes 40 seconds for hot water to come out of the kitchen tap. So we'll do a stopwatch and thermometer test before. Then you're gonna follow me through as I install this pump on my system whilst learning about hot water systems along the way, followed by a stopwatch and thermometer test at the end of the video to see whether we've sorted the problem out. All the things that I use in this video, this pump, the hand tools that I use, the tool bags that I use are available in our Amazon store. The link for that is below but click that link at the end of the video after you've watched it to make sure that you know what you're doing. Anyway, let's get on the video and remember to hold tight. Let's get going. Remember, you can take some time to explore our interactive house to learn more about the plumbing in your home. So then guys, it's early morning at my house right now. It's about, well, it's not early, early. It's quarter to seven. But the main thing about that is, is that I said to Emily last night, whatever you do in the morning, don't run the hot tap. I want to get a 100% accurate reading of how long it takes the hot tap to get hot here at the furthest point. I've got a thermometer here. Uh, I'm just gonna get my stopwatch and then we're gonna run this hot tap flat out and we're gonna see how much water we also collect as well so we know how much water we're wasting and how long it takes for the hot water to get here. And then I'll show you the difference in time once we've installed this secondary return pump from Velo and also how much water we save as well. So this is gonna be great. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Now let me find my stopwatch before I go mental, because it's the morning, and it takes me about an hour to stop going mental in the morning. Right then, so let's get going. So bowl in there, that is fully on hot there. Stopwatch, ready to roll. So you ready guys? One, two, three, go. So here I'm waiting for the water temperature to get up to 55 degrees. Hopefully you can see that okay. 22 degrees, 21, 20, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, 21, so now let me quickly go and grab a shower, have a coffee, have a cup of tea, then I'll be able to show you around the system and tell you why this is happening and how I'm going to fix it. <sighs> Lovely, nice and refreshed. So anyway, let's have a look at this system. I'll show you now why it's taken so long. The first place we need to go is up there in the loft. Let's go. My favorite place feels like home. So what we're gonna do, I'm not gonna talk about the boiler or anything like that. All we need to know for this video is our hot water comes from this tank here. Now we've got our cold coming in. There's a dip tube that goes all the way down to the bottom and then hot water is heated up by our boiler or by our immersion heater and comes out of this pipe just over here. So cold water comes in here. I mean, look at this. It's all been very well insulated and everything. That's what I want to see. Um, and then our hot water is heated up. You can't really see it very well, but there's a little red tag there and it comes up and out of this pipe here, round the back, down here, the hot and cold tee off and go off to a shower, a cross water shower. So that pipe goes down there. So we've already gone about, I don't know, from the tank, that's probably already a meter and a half's worth of pipe run. We're going down. And then it goes all the way down there. So I'd say we're now at about four and a half meters maybe. Then it tees off in various places here. It goes that way to the kitchen, but it runs through here to the bath that's coming out. Uh, bits and pieces in there, the lovely toilet that I'm gonna to be doing. All this, guys, is gonna be filmed on this channel, so you'll be able to learn while I'm doing these jobs, while I'm doing the bathroom. Downstairs loo to do, loads of stuff. So we're at about four and a half meters there, but so it tees off that way, through, and I've lifted this up already. Oh, then it runs along here somewhere, off to that corner there. So what's that? That's gotta be maybe nine meters of run, 10 meters of run and then it drops down on this flexi, which is a temporary flexi, drops down in this corner just like that, and then runs behind these kickboards here, behind the cooker, behind there, up to our kitchen tap. So yeah, you've guessed it. The reason we're having to wait so long for hot water to come out is because we're having to draw off a whole 15 meters maybe, maybe even 20 meters worth of pipe cold water before we get to the hot water back in that tank that's all the way up in the loft. So how are we going to fix this problem?
Introducing the Velo Star Z Nova T. So you can see there, what's wrong with the system? It's just a physical layout problem. And it's a bit of a shame that we can't, you know, it'd be lovely if we could fit something on the one pipe that feeds all my hot water taps, and suddenly that made it so hot water came out very, very quickly. Unfortunately, we can't get around that. We have to fit a pump like this. We have to send a flow or return out to physically the farthest point we want to be able to get to, uh, and I'm gonna be taking this quite a long, long way. So, let me just get my lovely soldering bag out of the way. What do we get inside one of these Velo Star Z Nova Ts? Well, the usual stuff, uh, that you come to expect. And I actually really like that sort of bit of packaging there. Nice easy box. We've got instruction manual, but these are really, really simple, really easy to get through. The one thing you're gonna to wanna to be able to take notice of is how we set up the timer, how we commission it, that's later in the video. Once we've actually installed it, I will commission it. You'll see it all working. Uh, we've got some gubbins in here. I always call it gubbins, don't I? So we've got the main body of our pump just here. We've got our control dial on the front but we can click forward and twist. We've got our display on here. We've got a nice little back body here, all brass, um, with a non-return valve built into it, and also a little valve on here as well. But I'm gonna add valves to this when I actually install it, so we shouldn't ever need to really use that. We've got the standard plug and play installed for our electrics. To get this to the pipe size we want, we've got some nice flat unions, really, really handy, with rubbers supplied. Guys, how many times have I said it's great to see a pump manufacturer supplying their own rubbers? The last thing you want to do is get on the job and not have any rubbers, all right? And uh, these rubbers here will get you down to half inch iron. You can't really see it, but there is a taper in there. So you can effectively go straight onto copper pipe from here. But what I'm gonna do when I install this, I am going to put a lever valve on each side below and above, and then I've always got control of it. And the good thing about having flat unions is if you've got a problem, it's very easy for you to slacken those unions off and draw the pump out without having to flex the pipe. Along with the insulated backing that we've got on here, we've got an indicator arrow as well for which way the water is going to pump around the system. And also if we ever want to get this off to actually change this bit, we just can slacken this big union off here, take this module out and then put a new one in. I honestly cannot wait to get it in, to actually get it working. So let's get on with the job. What we're going to do is we're going to get our pump, our Velo pump, and I'm going to mount it probably somewhere down there. And what this is going to do, because it's a brass pump designed specifically for this job, it's going to slowly circulate hot water that we wash in around a circuit. So what does that circuit do? At the moment, we've got everything looking like this. If we put a pump in with a circuit, this is what's gonna happen. So there's our circuit like that. Here's our pump here. And say we, we pump it that way. That's going a small trickle of hot water through our pump and around our circuit. What's going to happen? What's gonna happen when we do this? Simple, isn't it? We've already got really, really hot water going around here. When I open that up now, rather than the hot water having to run all the way down this pipe here, all the way down there, all it's got to do is travel that last little bit, hasn't it? Which means one, we're gonna use much less water for it to get here. Two, we're not gonna to have to wait so long. That is what a secondary return system does. That's what I'm gonna to do to this system today. So there's a couple of things we need to think about. There's a couple of things you need to know when it comes to doing this sort of job. Number one, we cannot have plastic pipe on the pumped circuit side of a secondary return system. What I mean by that is that means we can't have plastic pipe on this bit, that bit or anything like that but you can have plastic pipe going to the last bit the last leg because water isn't circulating around that bit the reason you can't use plastic pipe on hot water secondary return systems and you can on heating systems is because heating systems don't have a constantly replenished supply. Also, the other consideration we have to think of is everything has to be insulated very, very well. We need to make sure that when our pump is running and trickling water around this system, we're not losing heat out of the tank because we really only want our tank heat to be on in the morning and then on the evening. And if this is running around all day, when the tank is not calling for heat again and it's timed off, we don't want to be losing all that heat into the floor area and into the room and all that. So to recap, the considerations you need to think of are, it cannot be in plastic and it must be insulated really, really well. That's so important. Make sure you use loads of gaffer tape. I don't care what it looks like. Make sure all those joints are done up really, really well. Under the floor, everything. That's so important when it comes to secondary return systems. Another thing that I want to demonstrate to you actually on one of these is just, number one, how easy it is to take the head off. 
So if you do have some sort of issue with the head, which is very, very rare, it's gonna be very easy to take off. Also, just look at that little baby impeller in there. We're not thrashing water around at a massive rate. It's really important for you to understand that a secondary return system, water is kind of percolating around. It's not going flat out through like a pump like you'd have on a heating system. It's just slowly, quietly moving around. The other thing I wanna show you is just this body. What's important about this body? There's no steel, it's all brass. Why is that important? because this is a replenished water supply. If we keep adding fresh water to steel, it's going to rust. And that's obvious, isn't it, by the fact that when we do heating systems, when we work on heating systems, the water that we put in with steel has to be inhibited to stop it from rusting. Also on the back of it, just make sure you've got an arrow on here for direction. We've got a little valve at the top here, and then we've got a non-return valve down at the bottom. So just a few little things for you to consider there when you're installed in one of these pieces. So look, let's get on with it, guys. Um, I'll have a little chat with you along the way while I'm doing it as well. It's fun, this sort of thing. So I love improving stuff like this. It's gonna be wicked. The first job I'm going to do is just take up this flooring, see where I can find out where the pipe runs go. Um, I know there's butte line that I've put in to go down that hot pipe bit. So for the circuit side of this, I'm gonna to have to remove the butte line because as I said, the whole of the replenished water supply secondary return circuit has to be in copper. We're gonna lay in our new pipework now, but first let's get this floor up and find out actually what's going on. When you're doing this kind of work, it's always about how deep do you wanna go, how deep are the floorboards, get a good knowledge for that sort of thing. If you're gonna use a skill saw like I am here, start off high and then just keep going down a millimeter at a time in the same area until you can just about see through. Even better than that, try and pull a bit of floorboard up that's there already and gauge the side of your blade next to that. Whatever you do, don't cut so deep that you go through a pipe or a wire. Clean up as you go along. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh yes. Right, so the floor is up. I know that our hot pipe is that one there because when I ran the hot tap downstairs, it got baking hot, so I know that. Um, what this hot pipe does, it goes through to here and somewhere here it converts to butte line and just runs over into that corner. What I'm gonna do, rather than pulling the whole floor up, I'm just gonna decommission the butte line and just leave it in the floor, which means what I'm gonna have to do instead is run two 15 mils around here and then down to my new drop down holes and then all the way down that wall where they'll link together to complete the loop and I'll also leave a little spur off there as well so that can go off into the kitchen. Um, now remember, look, that work can all be done now without me having to turn the water off. All I have to do is just get my pipes laid in, get them all nicely soldered up. Pipe work is just about figuring it out. It's not really something you can learn. It's sort of more you have to watch it and do it. So how about that's what you do here? <laughs> So those two holes that I've just drilled, perfect, are just here, look at that lovely bit of mess. Just there, through that little bit there. So when my door draws back, fully shut. Ooh, that is close, but yeah, that's bang on there. Sometimes in life, we have to notch out floorboard joists, so make sure that you follow guidelines with building regs when it comes to doing that. Also, do what I'm doing here and use a straight edge to make sure that your copper pipes aren't under any flex one way or the other when you put them in. Always important to get a pair of some clips in, just to hold it down. I know when we get our insulation on, it's gonna sit proud of this, but then when we screw our floorboard back down, it'll press it all down nice and tight and it shouldn't make any noise or anything like that when we're actually coming to use it. Oh, I really should go to the van and get my knee pads. It's just stupid. But I'm a stupid person. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a bend coming up from the kit, from downstairs, and then a 90 this way. Then I'm probably just gonna bring it along to here because I've got to do just a little bit of a dip, basically a crossover underneath there, and then carry on another bend around there. Just trying to make it so the amount of solders that I do are, is as small as possible while I'm in the floor. Another reason for doing bends as well is it just reduces the resistance of water going around. And like I said, it just makes things easier when it comes to doing soldering in a floor. It's a very dry environment. You often get a lot of cobwebs, bits and bobs like that down there. So you have to be really, really careful when you're doing that part of the job. Uh, that goes in there. Oh, how about that? Beautiful boy, oh yeah. So look at that, just by eye. I mean, that's not too bad, is it, eh? Down through there, round here. Then I've got my two joints there, cross over under there, 
along here like that and then down there. Tell you what guys, it's going all right. Right, let's do me crossovers. Now, I know you guys would love to sit and watch me do a couple of crossovers, but I've got a way of doing it, and I've already done a video, actually, a long, long time ago, showing you how to do this particular method, getting them in like that. It involves doing our first set bend, then using a ruler like you've just seen me do there, and marking it out onto those bends to get it back and straight again. Now, I'm gonna pop those pipes in there, get them all cleaned off, get my solder in, get my heat mat in, and this is where you've got to be really careful. And this, this takes a lot of practice to be able to get this to direct your flame so you don't burn anything. And now we're getting in all our insulation. The one thing I will do is keep the floorboards up and everything later on for when we pressure test and take a good look at those coupling solders. I know they're gonna be fine. So then gang, and apologies, we're all very handheld today, but you know, I want us to get around this job and see exactly what we're doing. So here are our two pipes up here now. Basically our fly and return, all I need to do is pin them back to the wall, bring them down here, and then I just have a U with the feed pipe to the kitchen, the uncirculated bit, which I can use plastic on, sticking out of the bottom of that. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And as ever, clips first. So get all your clips in nice and straight, and then your pipes will follow, won't they? They'll follow in nice and straight as well. This glass door ends here, so that's not gonna be in the way of what we're doing up there, because I am gonna be doing another video here, and that is installing a radiator, teeing that off an existing heating system, and going through all the thought processes um, and considerations that I do there as well. Watch me just get this pinned, watch me get these pipes in, and then we'll just get all this soldered up, and then that's this bit finished. And then all we've got to do then is go up into the loft with our pipe, pop our pump in, and then all we have is two little connections right at the end to leave the disruption for the hot water for me and my lovely wife, who's gonna go ape if she can't have a shower. Um, that will be kept to a minimum, so. Yeah, let's get on with it anyway. So whilst I'm getting those clipped, let's have a little overhead diagram of what I've currently done in the bedroom above us. By the way, I love how I can convert the Bosch impact driver into an SDS drill with just that little twist click thing. It's absolutely wicked. It's also small and just like really handy, I love it. Anyway, so those two pipes that we've got there go up into the bedroom. Here's an overhead diagram of the bedroom at the moment and what we've installed. As you can see, we've got our current hot water pipe coming over in butte line down to that corner and you can see it sticking out in the living room to my left in that insulated pipe. We've already laid in our new copper pipes for our fly and return for the secondary return circuit for the hot water system and I'm currently clipping and installing them down into the living room. But as of yet we have still not interrupted the hot supply which will keep my wife happy because it means she can still have a shower, it means that we haven't got the hot turned off or anything like that. I'm trying to keep the disruption for that part of the job right at the end by doing our final connections. But when we've completed this little bit here I'll I'll cut off the butte line and leave it in the floor and just drain it out and that'll be where it stays. Then we'll connect whatever we choose to be our flow pipe to our current hot water route that we've just cut off from the butte line. The return pipe going back up to the tank hasn't yet been installed yet, but we'll be connecting that to the other side in the floor later on. As I said, it's really important with secondary return systems to make sure that everything is insulated as well as possible as good as it can be. I might even put insulation around these pipes once we get this wall up, because there's gonna be a false wall here, but that will only get done after the electrician has come in and sorted out that lovely distribution for the kitchen. Here, I'm soldering up the very end of the loop and the spur that's gonna lead off to the kitchen sink. Right then, so there we go, look at that. Beautiful little couple of bends there. I really like just whack on a bit of the solder on these. That, you know, I know a lot of you wanna see stuff without hardly any solder in it, but look, I don't want these bees to leak once I put a wall up. So what we've got going here, this is the end of the loop. So now our hot water, rather than having to be drawn all the way from the loft, should be here already because we're pumping it around this loop. So now when I open that kitchen tap, hot water should be here already. Do you want me to reiterate to you again why it's important that we insulate it? I think you guys know now, don't you? I think you got it. So let's get this bit insulated as well. I back my solder in, all right? I, usually what I'd do if I was on a job, I'd pressure test all this and insulating would come on the very last day. But I'm gonna insulate that now just so I get this bit done, all right? I gotta insulate my pipe. I gotta insulate now. I gotta insulate my pipe. I gotta insulate now. I gotta insulate my pipe. I gotta insulate now. I gotta insulate my pipe. I gotta insulate now. I've gotta make sure that my insulated pipe is all cool. I gotta make sure that it never releases up for you. I gotta make sure that all the hot water is going round. I gotta make sure that I'm gonna know. God, what am I doing? Right, that little bit down the bottom there, I'll do later. That's one of the little last connections. 
So we've got three areas where we do our last connection. Uh, it's gonna be here, the little bit upstairs where we join into our current flow, where the butte line is, and then also up at the top on the tank. Now we can pop up into the airing cupboard and get our clips in to add our pipe for our secondary return. Remember, all we're doing is sending a big loop out and a big loop back again. This is not complicated. And rest assured, I'll show you the whole layout of the system at the end of the video. Right then, gang, after a lot of pipe work that I've done everywhere, I'm back up in this lovely loft. Oh, my phone's going, sorry about that. Yeah, so after a lot of pipe work, I've now got back up here. I'm now ready to install this little pump. So I've got it all built up, ready to go. Um, what I'm doing, I don't have to do this, but I'm gonna pop a couple of lever valves just either side, just in case there's a problem, I can just leave a valve that off and then I can work on it if there's a leak or anything like that. While I've got it how I have now, it's a good idea to do it. I also wanna make sure I get my arrow in the right direction. So this is gonna be just lightly pushing back into the tank at the top. Um, and that's what I'm gonna be doing there. So look, I've just got my clips on here. So when I pop it in, there we go. That's it in there. Oh man, it's looking really, really nice. Really pleased with how this job's going. It's just a hard old graph, this one is, because you're up in a loft, it's about 30 degrees, lovely. Um, and now I've got this sort of biggledy piggledy bit to do up here to get this, this bit of pipe work through back up to there, which is not going to be easy, but we'll have to figure out a way of doing it. Well, and then once I've done that, we can turn everything on. I'll get all this insulated as well. And oh, I just can't wait to get it working. I really can't, it's gonna be wicked. Now is the time for me to pop downstairs and do my final connections. So here I'm doing the final connections to get the hot water pipe connected to our old flow and also our return pipe connected as well to the pipe that we've installed down in the air and cupboard earlier in the video. And also I'm getting the spur off to the kitchen installed downstairs. That connected really nice and easy and I was really happy with it. So after another half an hour, I then made my final connections to the top of the tank. So as you can see here, I've got the velo pump clipped onto the wall, everything's nicely insulated, and we're now going back into our secondary return at the top of the tank with our incorporated high pressure and temperature relief valve going off to the tun dish. Right, so all that's done now, all that's to be uh, done to finish this job off is just get the floor back down. Fun bit, this, yes. Happy birthday to George. Happy birthday to George. Meow, 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 meow. Couple of things you wanna do when you're putting this stuff back down, look at that, that's really tightly packed in there now. Uh, but what you wanna do is just mark out where your pipes run. And a lot of people are gonna say, one day when someone pulls this up, they'll go, oh look, someone was really considerate and they showed where the pipes were. While I'm getting that all done, let's have a quick look at the features of the pump itself. Number one, it doesn't use a lot of power at all, only about six watts, that's insane. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you're commissioning is just setting up the time. It's very easily done by clicking down on the dipper and holding holding it for five seconds, and then you can access the menu. Scroll across to the left-hand side to adjust the actual time right now. I've already got it in at 18 minutes past two, but you can also set the three on and off times during the day. But you could set it up like I have here, so it comes on at six in the morning and then goes off at nine o'clock at night. But the one really cool thing I loved about this is that you can set it up to control a constant return temperature. So that means I've got it set here at 55 degrees, and as soon as it makes 55 degrees, the pump will come on one minute and every two just to make sure that the temperature is topped up. Also, there's a handy thermal disinfection mode. So if the pump recognizes that the temperature is going over 68 degrees, it will run for two hours solid to make sure that the whole system gets a good clean through. But you can find out more about the Star Z Nova T from Velo and all their other pumps using the Velo Assistant app. After I got the floor down and commissioned the pump, I turned everything on and just ran it for a few days to see how it was going. Now we're back another early morning to see what the difference is. So now is the time to test and see what difference this has made. So I've got my thermometer here, so I'm just gonna set that to Celsius, and then I'll push this over, and press the start button at the same time, okay? Oh man, it's not easy to do. Here we go. Right, 24, 26, 44, wow, so much better. 55, 52, 53, 54, boom, there we go. 17 seconds, 17 seconds, my God. So nearly 20 seconds less. Also, look how much less water there is in the bowl as well. That is amazing. So 17 seconds. I did a test a few days ago, 
and actually got it down to 11 seconds difference uh, that I was really, really pleased with. Um, the other thing that I've been able to check while we've been doing this that I think would be a concern for some of you guys is that you know, your hot water tank comes on usually in the morning, you know, it heats up in the morning from the boiler or from the immersion or whatever, and pumping the water around the system, no matter how well insulated it is, is gonna result in a small amount of heat loss. So I was keeping an eye on that through the day. I mean, I'm a bit naughty, my tank I'll heat up to about 65 degrees. Throughout the day, by the end of the day, if it hadn't been used all day long, uh, by the time the next heat top-up cycle came on at say four or five in the afternoon, the overall loss of heat was about five degrees. So really negligible. It didn't even go that far, it was like 62 degrees. There's no reason you can't install this, have it run all day long, with the special timer and the few little bits and bobs that are actually integrated into this pump from Velo, and also not lose loads of heat, but also use a lot less water when you're running it through. Emily's been absolutely over the moon by it, aren't you, Emily? She is, she's very happy. And it is just mad, I mean, I used to think, right, I'm gonna wash my hands, I've got to open the tap and wait 35 seconds for water to come out. Now, at the best times, I was waiting 10 seconds. Today, I was waiting about 17 seconds. So, really, really pleased with it. I think it's absolutely great. Um, yeah, over the moon with this system. And also the fact that all the other taps are gonna be opening up a lot quicker too. So then, guys, there we go, all done. I've now got hot water on demand near the kitchen tap out there. It's a lot nearer all the other taps. Let's face it, straight away by doing what I've done, say I was drawing off water from the nearest tap. Before it got hot, I'd have to draw water all the way down this pipe, all the way down there, all the way down through the airing cupboard, and then off under the floor to that tap. Now with the secondary return, already it's down under the floor underneath the airing cupboard, but even better, that kitchen tap that's miles and miles away, all it's got to do is run that little bit of plastic that's behind all the kitchen units that doesn't have a circuit on it. All I have to do is open that tap there. 11 seconds, 11, 12 seconds, something like that. It used to be 35 seconds, didn't it? I tested it a few days ago on the Saturday and it was coming through in about 11 seconds. Uh, this morning it came through at 17 seconds, but still that's a massive decrease in time and also the amount of water that we're losing. Compared to the old way, I'm saving roughly five to 10 liters of water every time I fill up that sink. So that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, I'd probably fill that up once or twice a day. Take that over to a week, a month, a year. The saving is incredible. Also, the fact that this doesn't really pull much electricity. It's got a very small impeller on it, like we saw. Um, so it does, it's not thrashing around all the time. And also, it's got that fantastic function. So when the temperature gets up in here, it will just cut off and then it will just run a little bit just to trickle it about. So it won't be thrashing around all the time. Very easy to set up. I was really, really impressed with it. I just love it. I'm absolutely over the moon with it. Yeah, great stuff. Really, really, really happy. Um, it's great to do a job like that. Come down, open the tap up and you're like, wow, that has made a massive difference to my marriage. <laughs> um, anyway, if you want to buy one of these pumps, they're gonna be on my Amazon store if I can find them. Also, all the tools that I used in this video, Everything that you've seen that I've used in this video, if I can find it, will be popped on my Amazon store. If you really want to find something specific, just comment on the video below and I'll send you over a direct Amazon link for that if I can get on there and have a look. But most of the stuff you should find in the store should be easy for you to find. Um, also, there's going to be a great song coming up right now from the AL Army. Oh my God, I'll see you guys on Thursday night for another big fat pick. Uh, it's going to be wicked. Any final things that you should take away from it? Okay, if you want to improve how long it takes for hot water to come out your tap, I'm afraid you're going to have to put an extra pipe in, make a circuit and put one of these pumps in. There's no other way around it. Big consideration should be made to insulating. Um, and lastly, I would say, just make sure you pop your valves in, make sure all your pipe works neat, make sure the whole of the circuit pipe work is in copper, that there's no plastic um, and you should be fine. That, that should be all you need to do. Um, as long as you don't go completely crazy. I hope you've enjoyed watching today's video. I hope you've seen that this is the way to fix it, that you've got a demonstrated before and after, how I've done it. I hope you've enjoyed watching me do it and all these things. Um, if you've got any questions, please comment them below. If not, I'll see you in next week's video. Remember to hit the like, hit the notification as well with the subscriptions and the strange accent. I don't know what that is. Um, also, follow my vlog as well at Times of James and I'll see you in next week's video. Remember AL Army, I'll see you guys even earlier on Thursday evening for another live stream and a quick beer. If you're interested in joining the AL Army, click the link below as well and I'll see you in next week's video. Remember to hold tight. See you soon. Have one, two, it's so precious.
Thank you for watching, everybody. I'll see you in next week's video. Remember to hold tight throughout the night.